do the pageant. Hello, Merry Christmas. Welcome to Cold Nights, Bright Lights, our pandemic pageant. This year looks a little different, but the truth of Christmas, the love of God, and the joy of our church community pageant remains the same constant space of worship, contemplation, and celebration. Some things like our tree and decorations are familiar. Other things are becoming familiar. No matter how we gathered to celebrate a cold night in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago, no matter how we remember the bright lights of the star guiding wise men to kneel before a newborn king, the bright lights of the angels appearing before the shepherds, banishing fear, bringing good tidings, and the bright light of a tired, joyful mother, a weary, loving father, and a tender yet noble baby God in human flesh, lying in a manger. Well, hello and Merry Christmas, boys and girls. Santa here. And I'll be bringing you a few tips for how to have a COVID-friendly Christmas throughout the program today. My first tip is make sure you have a little bottle of hand sanitizer by the milk and cookies that you leave for me. I want to stay safe as I go from house to house this year. This is a special note from Santa. Stay safe, everyone. We can, as the Gospel of Luke says, be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. Luke 1 verse 4, for the truth of this story, the truth of God's love, the truth of our faith, remains true regardless of the changing, uncertain world around us. God's love born to earth in human form and born to a young couple in an uncertain time of their lives, their relationship, their society, is constant and certain a truth made even clearer when held against the uncertainty of this past year. Mary understood our fears of not knowing what's next, of not knowing what new, terrifying headline tomorrow may bring. Unlike us, she wasn't worried about social distancing or whether she would send her child to school or choose online learning. She was worried about how her husband would react to her unprecedented news how she would endure the long journey to Bethlehem, the long journey of her pregnancy, of her future. I think for me, I work in a hospital, and so for me, the pandemic has been particularly real. Uh, and seeing all the people who have been um, affected both physically by COVID, but also emotionally and spiritually by COVID, not being able to have the same kind of family support and the, and the family gathering around them. And, and seeing the isolation that happens in there and, and the struggles that happen. So it's been pretty, pretty difficult to make sense of that. And as part of my job as well, I support staff. And so seeing the toll that the pandemic has taken on us as healthcare workers and, and having to be there and listen to the difficulties that they've had and not being able to interact with their families in the same way and, and, um, and all of that, I think that's, that's probably been the hardest for me. For me, probably it would have to be losing my pet. That was really hard in the midst of a pandemic, but um, it's also just been really hard um, not seeing all my friends and not being able to hang out with them. One of the hardest parts um, was transitioning to online school. Um, it was just a lot of change, um, and it was hard to learn all the new skills in a short amount of time. And also not being able to see um, like my grandparents as much, or like my friends, so that's kind of been hard. The most challenging thing has probably been 
know, online school and all that. Uh, it's kind of annoying to uh, just be in school for the first few months and then just taken out and online sitting at a desk all day. Um, the most challenging part of the online school is probably like switching in between classes and only having like a couple minutes to get on to the next meeting when the teachers don't let you in right away and then you're afraid you miss something in class that's important. Around Halloween, um, my class had a COVID case and we had to do a lockdown, so I missed Halloween. I was in quarantine, so that wasn't, that wasn't nice. Not really seeing extended family as much has been pretty tough. Just been hard wearing a mask all the time and like people forgetting to sanitize, all like, and it's also been hard like every day just hearing how many COVID cases on the news. It just, it, it doesn't make you feel very good. Because of this pandemic, I lost my job. That was the biggest challenge for me. I was like uh, trying to pursue my PhD. I have to travel to India. I couldn't travel. These all were the challenges. I was studying, I was doing my master's in public policy from University of Calgary. And when I was studying, she was working. And then this pandemic came and suddenly everything went online and, and then the school shifted online as well for my child. Uh, so yeah, so it was kind of crazy in the beginning. I'm fortunate that I've got a job that's kept me very busy, but it's been so busy, it's been really, really long days. There have been many uh, times that I don't see you guys in the morning and I probably don't see you at night either. So it's been, uh, it's been a long year that way. Looking forward to the holidays. But Mary did not let fear consume her. She heard the angel's words and found comfort in them. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mary surely had her fears, doubts, and dread of the uncertainties of her calling, but she responded in faith, not fear. For despite the darkness of the cold night of uncertainty, the light of God is bright and wonderful. Alongside her fears, she found comfort in her faith in the bright light of God's love for her and God's immaculate planning. She found peace alongside fear, the light putting the dark in contrast and context. As the scriptures say, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And it certainly did. She knew her fear of the unknowable and she responded to that fear by praising the Lord, rejoicing in the bright lights and not cowering from the darkness as Mary did in a quiet garden in Judea, in the glow of bright lights on a cold night, let's respond in song. Hello again, boys and girls. I have one more thing to say about the cookies you leave for me this year. I think it would be good if you left three times as many cookies as you did last year. It isn't proven that lots of cookies keep you safe from getting sick, but we must do everything we can to stay safe. So just in case, leave many, many cookies for me. Just so you know, my favorite kind is chocolate chip. This is another special note from Santa. At the time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was the government of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took them, he 
took them with Mary, to whom he was engaged, who is now expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for a baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. But there were some blessings as well in our life and we got some more time together as a family which we were not able to have from a couple of years. And apart from that, I got opportunity to give my um, PhD defense online for the first time it happened in my university. So that was the big opportunity for me because of this pandemic I got that and finally my degree got approved and I'm a doctor now. I feel always blessed when I when I, when somebody asks me and say, "Hey, what does your wife do?" and I say, "Oh, she's a doctor." <laughs> I got my degree done as well, so I got master's awarded this year. And on the top of that, you know, when Tanvi kind of lost her job, I got a job offer. So it was so complementary and balanced that God blessed us in abundance at that time. We spent a lot of time at home, and you know, the board games and hanging out and cooking. Um, some of the family members learned how to bake that were never bakers before. But one of the big highlights of the summer, we reacquired a 1973 Winnebago that my dad had purchased brand new. The, the Winnebago broke down a couple of times, which led to some adventure. Uh, we learned how to take the Rome bus between Banff and Lake Louise and Canmore quite well. We also learned how to do some plumbing. We at uh, one time had the toilet totally out of the Winnebago, flipped upside down in a rainstorm, and doing a little bit of ad hoc Winnebago plumbing worked just out, worked great. New family experiences in 2020. Uh, some positive parts have been, uh, I guess I've gained some patience for, you know, waiting for all these things to kind of reopen. I play sports like basketball, volleyball, all that. And I've just had to wait for a long time to get back into them. Learning how to actually write a proper email. I've learned um, a lot of skills um, with technology um, through online learning and also just enjoying the moment and what we have because there's so much unknown. Being able to work with such amazing people during this time of pandemic is we're like all bouncing ideas off of each other but still like respecting what the pandemic is and being ready to change from one plan to another in like a split second after changes but I found that challenging but I found it kind of fun. After living alone for a long time and then at the beginning of the pandemic um, being by myself and and we used to see each other all the time and then it came to where we were only seeing each other a couple times a week for very small moments of time. Uh, usually as we were passing this one back and forth <laughs> as he needed care. Um, and uh, in that it was getting pretty difficult and, and the loneliness was pretty difficult, uh, especially coming home from work and not having that distraction. So sitting and ruminating a lot on everything that was happening. And so um, one day I came to my mom and, <laughs> and just said, hey, how would you feel about if I moved in? And, and we just kind of became a cohort and uh, support each other through this. And so it's been, that for me has been a joy. Um, I don't think I realized how deep that loneliness was until I got into the house and, and having the distraction, having a meal ready for me. Elena makes, makes dinner during the week and so <laughs> having that meal ready when I got home from work and, and just experiencing that love and the distraction um, has been very healing for me actually and, and giving me the stuff I need to continue doing my job.
That night, there were shepherds staying in their fields nearby, guiding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the, Lord, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snug snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them and about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that he had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold wise men from east come to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. I think the best part personally for me was that COVID was kind of letting us spend more like quality family time together. I think we've gone on a lot of adventures we probably wouldn't have together as a family, like the Winnebago, we've, and also like around in the community, there's been a lot of places that we haven't really been to outside and then we're like, wow, this is really cool. I don't think we've probably ever been healthier. I think uh, with three kids at three different schools running around, We've been fortunate that we've been healthy and well, and um, hopefully that continues going forward. Uh, probably the most memorable thing is getting our kitten, Mac. I've been able to spend a lot more time with my family, and we've been able to go to our cabin, and we've been able to go camping and get outside and spend more time together. So I think that's been really nice. Being a part of Grace Community Online, that has made a lot of difference. I recently joined 12 Sundays, and uh, they're phenomenal. Um, and then Trisha, is, our daughter, is doing online Sunday school, which is fantastic, I think. Uh, she's always excited about it. And then you know, the coffee booth, I, for the very first time I visited last week, and was amazed to see the hospitality and 
people pouring their heart out during the conversations uh, for the coffee booth. So uh, that's something I think is commendable. She's usually at a camp all summer and with her being home this summer we took advantage of that and we spent a lot more time in the mountains and experiencing nature and, and I think that has just been really bonding for all mm -hmm. of us. Um, because my mom comes along with us as well. <laughs> so we have my mom and the dog and, and the two of us, and, and it's been a lot of good family bonding that way. I've just been really appreciative of being part of Grace and just the welcoming and, and affirming of, of people and, and just how creative everybody is um, through all of this, because I know it hasn't been easy for you guys either. Yeah. And I think another joy for me is watching her in her job as well and flourishing and, and, um, and just enjoying it so much. It's really heartwarming for me to see how well she's doing and, and uh, how much she enjoys just caring for everyone. Maybe just a few more months and God's gonna restore everything again together. <laughs> it has been an absolute pleasure getting to spend time with you here tonight. Now I have to get going because I'm about to be very, very busy. Stay warm, stay happy, Stay safe and don't forget that no matter how cold and dark the night may seem, the gift of Jesus at Christmas time is a bright light to light each one of us so that we can be lights to others. And givers of cookies too, you know, for safety's sake. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Ho, 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 ho. May you feel the love and light of God this season and not forget to share the lights in the coldest, darkest nights. We feel what we need to feel, but know that Christ meets us in our fear, in our uncertainty, and reassures us of God's divine love and God's promises to us. Jesus Christ is a light to reveal God to the nations, and by our faith, we too become bright lights, revealing God in the coldest and darkest of nights, and revealing Christ to the people of Grace Church the people of Calgary, Canada, Earth, and all people this Christmas season. May we all feel the love, joy, and comfort of God's bright light this season.